we have to dive into the head of J.J. Watt and where he wants to go and what he wants uh, this late in his NFL career. And at this point, it's pretty much a given that he wants to win an NFL championship. He wants to go to a team where he can win some games. And uh, after that debacle of a season, what it was with the Houston Texans, where J.J. Watt apologized to Sean Watson for uh, feeling like they wasted a season of his career. Whatever it may be, J.J. Watt wants to go to a team that's a contender at this point. So there's been uh, certain teams. Uh, right now I have listed down seven teams that could have a realistic chance of landing J.J. Watt. And we're going to talk about each of those teams and then rank, give you our opinion from highly likely to least likely, which team is he going to land with. Let's start off with the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears are a long shot. If you can't tell, I'm going to go from least likely to most likely in that order. So with the Bears, this is a long shot. They're not going to have a lot of sacks this season, so that could mean that the defense around him, uh, around J.J. Watt, if he were to sign with him, or that defense in Chicago, isn't the best as far as rushing the quarterback goes. So you really need to pay up for J.J. Watt because he wants to go to a team, remember, that's a contender. And the Bears, even though they made the playoffs last season, they're not a team that you would really look at and be like, okay, they have the same amount of talent as maybe the Buccaneers or the Packers or the Chiefs. You want to go to a team that is in that same level, and the Chicago Bears automatically at that point are ruled out. If they, The only way that they can entice J.J. Watt to sign with them is to pay him a lot of money, and they're already below the cap. They're in the red. They're in the negatives. So you're going to have to release some players to free up some money for J.J. Watt. So the Bears, at that point, I feel like is the least likely option out of these seven teams for J.J. Watt to sign to. The Tennessee Titans. At first, I thought that this was a realistic chance of uh, J.J. Watt going to the Titans because uh, you know, Mike Vrabel, who was in Houston and in that good relationship and the culture in Tennessee is seems like it, it is one that players really love. But then I really thought about it and I thought about going back to the sacks per game stat about how they had 1.4 sacks per game and they were ranked 29th in the NFL. Again, I just don't feel like J.J. Watt would want to go to a team where there's not a lot of good talent on the defensive line. Around him, there's some good players. Yes, you've got Simmons. I understand, but the production that they're putting up on that defensive line and that defense, I don't feel like JJ Watt wants to be a part of that. So, unless Mike Vrabel and his liking and the connection that they have with him because of the, his time over in Houston, unless that's a con, you know deciding factor in him wanting to sign with Tennessee, I don't feel like JJ Watt would want to go to Tennessee. So, least likely you got the Bears, and then after that, least likely. The Titans. Moving on to the fifth most likely team to land J.J. Watt. The Buffalo Bills. Contenders. Listen, just like the Titans, I thought about this. They're up and coming. They're young. This would be a good team that J.J. Watt could go in and be a veteran and help out this defense. But then I thought about it more. And it's a tough decision because all the other four teams that are ranked ahead of the Buffalo Bills that we haven't talked about yet have better reasons in why J.J. Watt would want to play with them over the Buffalo Bills. And that's really the only reason why I have the Bills ranked fifth likely to land J.J. Watt. Let's move on to the fourth most likely team to land Watt, the Green Bay Packers. A lot of you guys may have him higher. I get it. Because of the hometown discount, he's from Wisconsin, uh, and they're contenders as well. They're in the NFC Championship. They're so close at making the Super Bowl. But the reason why I have them fourth likely is because we have to be realistic as far as the salary cap goes. If it wasn't for that, I would have the Packers ranked probably one or two. I really would. I feel like Watt would want to go there, win a Super Bowl in his home state. But because of that, I don't think that it's a realistic chance that the Packers were to release a very pricey player in order to sign J.J. Watt. Because the pricey players that you have on that team already, obviously there's Aaron Rodgers, you're not going to release them. Then you have the Smith brothers, like Preston Smith is a Darius Smith. They're not really brothers, in case you guys are wondering. But these are good defensive play, uh, pieces that they brought in the last couple of years that have really helped out their defense. I don't think the Packers would want to release them just to sign J.J. Watt. It, it just comes down to money. And the only chance that I could see this happening is if J.J. Watt were to take a hometown discount. And that's why I have them ranked at number four instead of maybe like sixth or seventh because of the hometown discount. But I, I, I don't think that's really happening. Number three, the Cleveland Browns. 
And the only reason that I put the Browns over the Packers, because I would have the Packers over the Browns, but the only reason is because there was a report out there that said that Watt is considering, seriously considering, signing with the Cleveland Browns. And if that report is true, then I'm going to put the Browns at the third most likely team to sign J.J. Watt. May the playoffs, they could get better and better if they sign the right free agents and draft the right players. And the Browns are also above average as far as salary cap goes in the NFL. So not only are uh, the Browns contenders making the playoffs, not only is J.J. Watt considering signing with the Browns, but they have good incentive as well and giving him a lot of money so he doesn't have to take a hometown discount of any sort. So the Cleveland Browns, high chance that he signs with them. The number two team, a lot of this, or, or this team is probably number one on a lot of people's list, but I'm going to give you a reason why I have them at number two. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Strong contenders. Strong contenders. Very good team. And he would play with his brothers, Derek Watt and TJ Watt. And that seems like a high chance of that happening with Watt wanting to finish his NFL career, playing with uh, his brothers on the same NFL team. But the salary cap is limited. And they would have to replace uh, or release certain players in order to free up some money. And what on his end would have to take a massive discount on top of that as well. And the reason why I have them ranked at number two, because the Packers are kind of similar. Where the Packers are in the same situation where the cap space is kind of limited, just like the Steelers. And they're both contenders. And in same scenario, I understand where you have to take a discount. But the reason I have the Steelers ranked at number two and the Packers ranked at number four is just because with the Packers... Strong contenders, but the only incentive of playing with the Packers, aside of them being strong contenders, is you take a hometown discount. You played your college ball in Wisconsin. Here, for the Steelers, it's you take a discount because you want to play with your brothers. That makes a lot more sense, and that makes a, a better reason for Watt to sign with the Steelers than for Watt to sign with the Packers. Wanted to finish out his NFL career with the Pittsburgh Steelers and play, and play with his family. But that just leaves... One team left to be the number one team in the running to sign J.J. Watt. You're going to hate me, and I hate myself for saying it. I really do. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the number one team. The only reason is because I don't understand where they get this amount of money, first of all. Maybe it's because these veteran players, when Tom Brady signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, are like, yeah, let's go down to Tampa Bay. Let's go take a a discount, just sign a one-year contract for almost no money, so that we could just win a Super Bowl. And guess what? It happened. That's exactly what happened. The star players came in, they won a Super Bowl, and J.J. Watt, being a star player, could do the very same thing. Just sign a one-year contract, play with Tom Brady, win a Super Bowl. What's the harm in that? You play in sunny Florida as well. They have the cap space, which I don't understand how they get so much money. They're above average, just like the Cleveland Browns at cap space for this season, for this offseason. Watt could be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And the reason why I have them ranked at number one as well is because there was a report out there. I don't know for sure who the source was. If it was Jason Lock and Four, then forget everything that I'm saying because we don't know if it's credible or not. But there was a report out there that said that Watt reached out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to let them know that he's interested in signing them or signing with them. They didn't reach out to him. Watt reached out to the Bucks. So because Watt himself, the source himself, reached out to the team, then I'm going to believe that Watt wants to sign with the Buccaneers over any other team. So to put it in order, we've got the Buccaneers, the Steelers, the Browns, the Packers, the Bills, the Titans, and the Chicago Bears. One through seven, and which team is likely to sign J.J. Watt. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments down below. Let us know which team do you feel like is going to sign J.J. Watt and which team will we play for in 2021.